Good morning from New Hampshire. Today, we're gonna to be hiking the Presidential Traverse for a full trail guide and more information about the Presidential Traverse. You can check the links in the description below. The Presidential Traverse here starts with Mount Madison. So you're starting from the Appalachia Trailhead, assuming you're going north to south, which is the easiest way to do it. Once you're at the Appalachia Trailhead, you're gonna to head to the Valley Way Trail and then head up to Mount Madison, which is your first uh, peak of the day. Now that the my headlamp isn't blinding me to get footage, let's talk about the Presidential Traverse. There's a couple variations for it, and I'll talk about that in a second, but generally it's 20 plus miles and about 9,200-ish feet of elevation, again, depending on your variation. Uh, so it's starting here at Mount Madison, and it's going to work all the way down to uh, Mount Jackson or Mount Pierce. Uh, so I'll show you a map here of the Presidential Traverse. So basically it starts on the Valley Way Trail, like I said, up Madison. And then there's a couple of variations that I'll show you in purple. And then whatever the main route is, I'll use a different color, not sure yet. Uh, but basically it'll get you from Mount Madison all the way to Mount Jack. The reason it's called the Presidential Traverse is because here in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, uh, many of the peaks that are 4,000 feet plus, which there's 48 of them, uh, are named after the presidents. The variations I talked about, basically there's two of them. So you can include Mount Clay and then add on Mount Jackson at the end. Uh, most people kind of split. For me, Jackson and Clay were presidents. This is the presidential traverse, so they will be included. As you can tell by my setup here, I am doing this in a day. It's common to do in a day, but I would say majority would break it up into multiple. You can camp in the huts. There's a couple of spots along the way, uh, but as always, you can find more information about camping in the full hike guide on my website, thevirtualsherpa.com. The trail is a zoo today. Actually, my head exploded when my stepdad dropped me off at the parking lot this morning because there's so many damn cars here, it's crazy. New Hampshire's funny, miles of hiking under the tree line and just like that, Madison is right in front of you to the left a bit. So it's gonna hike by the uh, hut here, which is a great place to get food and water if you need it, and then continue up uh, the slopes here to Madison, your first peak of the day. Gorgeous up here with the fog burning out in the valleys and the lakes. Really, really pretty day so far. As you get towards the top of Madison here, you have your typical New Hampshire scrambling class two on granite. Just chest, test your holds. The rock has been solid, but the lichen can get really wet and that makes it pretty slippery. Summit of Mount Madison here. Uh, so just about 4,000 feet of elevation to gain the summit from the start and just under four miles. So uh, obviously if you have 9,000 on the day, you got 4,000 out of the way right off the bat. That's pretty nice. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful up here right now. You can kind of get a preview of the next uh, peaks here. So next up is Adams, which is there. Then you got Jefferson through there and then Washington eventually uh, over there. The whole hike up, I was like, man, my back feels super light. And I uh, went to get some water at the top of Madison here and realized I hadn't filled up my water <laughs> before I left home. So that's why my bag is so light because I'm carrying two empty Nalgene's, uh, which leads me to water. And you can fill up a number of different spots. All the huts have water. And then there's pretty plentiful water sources as well. Definitely gonna wanna pack a lot. As you can tell by my sweating, you're gonna lose a lot of water today regardless of the mileage, just because of the humidity here. Beautiful on top of Madison, one peak down and uh, about 10 or so to go. Forgot to mention this, after you tag Madison, you're gonna um, head down to the hut again. So basically retrace your steps about a half mile. With your water refilled, you're gonna head back again to Madison and then the first trail junction here, you're gonna take the airline trail, uh, which goes through the 
the bushes here up towards Mount Adams, which is your second uh, peak of the day. You're gonna hit this trail junction, continue on uh, the Gulf Side Trail here, and eventually onto the Alpine Trail in a second. Beautiful. So looking back to uh, Madison, the obvious peak right in front of you there. So nice out today. Summit of Mount Adams, just right behind me here. Two down, 5,000 feet of gain so far, and uh, just over five miles. So next up, you got Jefferson. Pretty obvious. You're gonna go there, and Jefferson's right there. down Adams just as rocky as the way up if not rockier and uh, this is what you're gonna pretty much expect here all the way to Jefferson so if you're looking to get fast mileage on nice smooth trail that is not this section at all depending on the Karens that you follow you might end up there which is thunderstorm Junction but in reality you can just cut right across here there's another trail and continue on to Jefferson which is there Well, it's official. At the end of this hike, my knees are gonna have no cartilage left in them at all. It's gonna be bone on bone action. Can't wait for that. And uh, it's gonna be the end of the channel probably. So I hope you guys like this video. It'll be my last. All right, after descending to the shoulder between Jefferson and Adams, like basically right there, you're gonna start your ascent of Jefferson. You, you might be able to make it out. There's like a million people going up. Starting the climb of Jefferson here. You have about an 800 foot climb, so it's pretty steep uh, from here to the summit. Quick look back to Adams right there. What a freaking day. Keep saying it until it's not true. Oh, buddy. Now Jefferson delivering with the false summits. There's like 10 of them. Every time you're like, oh shit, that's it. It's not. Summit of Mount Jefferson. Right there, there's absolutely no way I'm gonna get good audio up there, so I'm gonna record the update here. Just about seven miles into the Presidential Traverse here, 5,800 feet of elevation gain so far, and the day hiking crowds are definitely picking up. So I'm gonna go quickly tag the summit, show you guys some views, and then keep hammering on. Got Mount Washington Resort, Redwoods, and then looking on to the next path here, so over to Washington eventually. After summiting Jefferson, your third official peak of the day, you're going to continue on basically right straight through uh, from the summit area. Summit is there, you're just going to come through here, 
and continue on. It's about a third of the way through the hike and you have your first optional summit of the day. For me, it won't be optional, but uh, it's Mount Clay. It's actually just right there. Uh, you can go around it, but you can also just go straight up. Just leaving uh, Mount Jefferson here, took a little break, it was very nice. And uh, really, you get a preview here of the route coming up to Mount Clay and then to Mount Washington. Just over eight miles in, you got your first optional presidential of the day. So you can go around Mount Clay and just go straight. Otherwise, go up left and tag it. Unlike Jackson at the end, which definitely adds on additional mileage, you might as well knock this one out. You're already right here. Just leaving Mount Clay, fourth summit of the day. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this trail. People love to sit on the, uh, like exactly on the summit markers. So I can't, <laughs> I've been able to film any of them, but there's B-roll of the summit. Uh, it's beautiful. You get a really awesome perspective of Washington. You get the Cog Railway, which I'll show you when we get closer in the background too. Obviously your next peak here is Washington, the highest in the state. Washington is gonna be a complete clusterfuck and I will be cranky during, during the filming. So I probably will keep it to a minimum because I'm having a great day and I wanna come across as a Debbie Downer, but I hate crowds. So there you have it. Uh, having said all that, Washington is a great place to refuel, to make sure your legs are good because you can take the tram down. Uh, you can get probably bum a ride with someone. It's really your last good bailout point. There is a ton of different options for food and beverages slash water up at the top of Washington too, which is great. After leaving Mount Clay here, a mileage update, just about uh, nine miles or so with 6,400 feet of elevation. Signs are pointing towards a kind of flatter second half, which I would love. And even though it seems like it's like 100 yards away, some is still a mile away. Legs are feeling okay. Definitely need some salt in the system right now. We're at the summit of Washington here and it is almost zero, like actually zero wind, which is insane. Insane. This is a place on earth where the highest winds have ever been recorded. It is always nasty up here. It, it's crazy. It's crazy. Zero wind. Summit of Washington. There it is. I'm not standing in the line, sorry. Bunch of champions right here. Absolutely just going for sodium. If you're done filling up after eating a nutritious lunch, uh, you can continue on here. And you're basically gonna wanna continue towards like the towers and then head right. This is Crawford Path, what you're looking for. Big uh, drum. Uh, I think it's like a measures wind. So over to your right. And you're just going to continue on. Uh, expect uh, slow going down Washington just because there's so many people on the mountain. You're going to have to step on and off the trail every once in a while. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the trail is significantly better. You can definitely start cruising on this if you wanted to. Before you were following the sign towards Mount Washington, right? This time you're going to be following it towards Crawford Notch. And that is until you get to the Jackson turnoff, which I'll show you. But uh, in general, these signs are going to be super, super obvious. And as the sign says, you got about eight miles to the end. A look back at Washington. You 
These are my, my dog friends behind me. Looking back towards Washington. So your next mountain here is Mount Monroe, which is right in front of you. After leaving the hut, again, it's super obvious where to go. Uh, there is just great signage on this trip. That move right there might have been the most technical of the day. It was a little maybe low class three action. You got the summit of Monroe right in front of you here. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do some descending. Might be able to make people out over there. That's eventually where we're going after we tag the summit here. Summit of Mount Monroe, so just shy of 12 miles in and about 7,000 feet uh, vert so far. So far, I've been really enjoying the Presidential Traverse with the exception of the amount of people on this thing. It is crazy. I keep thinking like, oh, all right, I'll leave Washington, there'll be less people. I'll leave, you know, this mountain, there'll be less people. And truly, it's just nuts. Literally, all day, you have maybe 10 yards, a group in front of you, 10 yards, a group behind you. And it's just tough. It's tough to do anything, filming, flying the drone like literally anything as we all know benjamin franklin is, was not president but he might as well have been so they named the sub peak here franklin peak and uh yeah this is your last official peak for a while Grew up here, I've hiked a lot in New Hampshire, and uh, this is like the best the state has to offer on a day like this, at least. Just crazy, crazy beautiful. Oh, I hope it's that deep. As I'm hiking today, I gotta say, too, definitely miss the people of New England. There's like this rugged friendliness that's been going on all day. People, everybody's saying hi, and I'm not a say hi on the trail kind of person. And now at this point, I'm freaking saying hi to everybody. They've got me, they beat me down. Last big climb of the day. And I keep saying that Jackson's gonna be a big climb, but this is Eisenhower. Summit is right there. The trail kind of works up like that. We've done Eisenhower a while ago. From what I remember, it's a bit rocky at the beginning, kind of like class two-ish, what you were doing on, you know, Adams, Jefferson, Madison. And then towards the top, it flattens out. Look at that. It's a look back at it kind of day. Cause every time you do, man, it's just crazy. A plus views, A plus. Summit of Eisenhower 
8,100 feet of elevation gain. Just about 15 miles in. Last big summit of the day. So next up is Pierce. And you're just gonna head that way. To get to Pierce, basically there, and then that, which doesn't look like much, is Pierce. From there to do Jackson, you're gonna continue on and then get to Jackson there. And then basically your exit out is like there. You just can't see the whole thing. I think these might be my favorite sections here because it's so unique to New Hampshire and Vermont, I guess. These little sections where you're just in the trees and they're like seven or eight feet tall, so they're just taller than you, but you feel like you're just in another world. Got the hiking poles back out. Downhill, not looking forward to it, considering how it's all I have left, really. Yeah, I'd much rather be climbing. on like the crazy prominent peaks along the way. Mount Pierce doesn't look like much, but that is the summit right there. Uh, but that is technically the end for some of you of uh, the Presidential Traverse. Obviously you have to go down after that. If you don't want to continue on from Pierce, you'll go tag the summit, which is just right up there. Come back, rejoin the Crawford Trail and end your day three miles to go. If you're gonna acknowledge that Andrew Jackson is the president, which he was, spoiler, albeit not a great one, you're gonna continue on. So you're gonna go tag Pierce right here and then hit up Jackson after that. We're just up here. So looking back, Eisenhower, and then went to Washington and then he came down here. I can't put him out without the focus, but it's basically your whole day there. Summit of Mount Pierce. Let me show you these crazy views. Wow, pretty good, huh? You are done if you're not counting Jackson or Webster. I'll take my eyes out. If you do, you're just gonna continue right through that uh, glorious summit there and just continue on towards uh, Jackson. Uh, you're gonna lose some elevation and then you're gonna have to regain it. So right now I'm at about 16 miles, uh, about 8,400 feet of vert on the day. It's about 2.5 miles to Jackson. You also pass the uh, mitzvah hut, which is another opportunity to get some food, to sleep if you wanted to, or uh, pump water or whatever, pour water as well. Dude, coming down from Pierce is just painfully slow, literally. But also the rock, everything is just soaking wet and uh, muddy. So you just have to like, literally every single move you have to think about. Looking back at a particularly painful section there. If you need to stop at the uh, hut, it's just right there. Otherwise, continue on towards Jackson this way. I couldn't film much of it, most of it I should say, because it was just so dangerous. But that descent from Pierce is no joke. Literally, you take one wrong step there, you're gonna have a bad time. Pizza when you french fry. Oh, there it is. Jackson. Final couple of scrambles here. Summit is right there. Wow. That's a view, huh? Whew. All right, summit of Mount Jackson. It's right behind me. Someone again is sitting right on the uh, cairn there at the top, but actually the views up here really really good different than the rest of the day since you're facing different directions and can see different mountains which is cool a bit hazy but I mean honestly no complaints to this point uh, just about 9,000 feet of gain and uh, just over 18 miles woof but this concludes 
the presidential traverse. So from here, you're gonna just go back down to the car, basically. To be honest, I don't know where that is, so I'm gonna figure that out in a second here. We're heading back down. Take some time to admire your work. I mean, look at that behind us. Just so sick. From the summit, basically, you wanna have this as your view and uh, take the Webster Jackson Trail down. So it looks like a big ledge here, but this is where the trail starts. And your ending game is somewhere in there at uh, Crawford Notch. By far the most technical down climbing of the day. With 20 miles on your legs, it's really nice. Wanted to give some final thoughts here on the Presidential Traverse. It's a classic, man. I mean, I don't care where you live in the United States or the world. Like this is, if you are an avid hiker, you want a challenging day, this has got to be on your list. It is absolutely awesome. It delivers all of the best parts of the White Mountains, minus the crowds, of course. Yeah, it's a challenging day. The only thing it's not really is technically challenging, but I feel like when you have this many miles, having a technically challenging terrain and doing that in one day is impossible. Really, really happy with today. Super tired. I'm gonna sleep so hard tonight. This is awesome. I mean, you gotta do this. If you live in New England, it's a no-brainer. If you're not from New England, get up here, make a trip out of it, because this is the real deal. I also have to say that on my trip today, although it was super crowded, I've talked about that a million times. So let's talk about crowds for a second, I guess. Yeah, so today, I mean, I really never had my own space. Pretty much the whole day, except towards Jackson's summit. Um, there are just people constantly, which was really surprising. And that leads me to my next point, which is shout out to the people hiking this. I mean, I gained a huge amount of admiration for all shapes and sizes of people doing this. And I feel like a lot of them ended on Pierce, but that still is an insane day. I really have gained a lot of respect for the people who come out and hike the White Mountains all the time because although they don't have the super technical stuff that maybe out west does, uh, high elevations, they're just super, they're their own monster, you know? You gotta figure out how to deal with the rocks and the roots, the mud, the mosquitoes, the humidity. I mean, it's its own beast. Unless you wanna go hike another mountain, this is the direction. 1.4 back to the car. Finally out of the woods and done with the Presidential Traverse. What a beautiful hike. Uh, but if you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe and then bell button not to miss any future hike related content. I do hiking all over New England, uh, really everywhere in the country that's popular, I've probably been to. So check out my videos, check out my website, thevirtualsherpa.com. Some final notes here on the Presidential Traverse. It's dog friendly, but I wouldn't bring a dog on it. That's a hell of a day for a dog. I ended up doing just about 21 miles. I fucked up the GPS a couple times by unpausing it, but uh, 21 miles, 9,000 vert, my totals for this one. Diesel day, but awesome day. As always, for a full hike guide for the Presidential Traverse, A to Z, everything you need to know, check the link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I know this was a long one, but I appreciate you, every single one of you guys who have made it to the end of this video. I'm gonna go die once Jackie picks me up. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you on the next adventure.